Hello, what's up, guys? It's been a while since my last video about the drones developers and Pixel and Pix4 stuff. So I thought it would be a good idea for me to just publish a new video about this and share some new info with you. Okay, in this video, I'm gonna talk about Mavis SDK. Many of you may have already used it. It's uh, very easy to use and it's built to easily uh, co communicate with the map link in the high level. So without further ado, let's first see what you can do with the things you're gonna learn in this video at the end. So it will be more motivating and inspire you to follow the video. <laughs> so without further ado, let's see how it will look like if you follow all the instructions I tell you. Okay, let's see what you can do with Mavis TK just for an example. We have QGON here, a terminal screen for connecting a software in the loop and our custom Python Kinter app on the left. So let's run our software in the loop simulation with Pix4 software in the loop. If you don't know it, I will tell you in the next part of the video. In the left, let's connect our custom and, and it's waiting for the drone to be connected. The red item should become green Manual one by one. Mode. The QGON is already connected. Our, our application is also connected as well. The QGON is connected on port 14550 and our Application is connected on 14. Hold flight mode. 50. The port, yes. Okay. Now everything is connected. We have the nav, arm. GPS, 3D fix. We can connect, uh, click on the test motor. Test motor will arm Disarmed. the drone. Wait for five seconds and then disarm the drone again. Let's do an automatic takeoff with our custom app, with our custom map SDK. Takeoff flight Let's mode. Select the altitude to five meter and click on takeoff. The drone is connected and you can see on the Q ground control it's Hold flight it mode. took off to five meter and started hovering about. Let's change the yaw to 90 degrees to the east and now it's facing east. Let's change the altitude to two meters. So as you can see, it's happening simultaneously between simulator, Q ground control and our custom map. Let's go 10 meters to forward it means 10 meter to the east uh, let's go 10 meter to the right uh, 10 meter to back you can see on the map that it's also changing and also the numbers inside our application is changing let's change the altitude to 4 meter and change uh, and return to home and hover now we can click on uh, uh, meanwhile you can use QGAN control functionality as well you can for example from QGAN you can uh, tell the drone to go for return example, to a specific mode. location or you can click on the land or return to land based on what you need and the drone will be landed automatically okay you can also send this command from QGAN control as well for example I'll click on takeoff Takeoff flight mode. Took off from, as you can see in the simulator, it's pretty self-explanatory and it needs nothing to be explained. Just for Hold motivation, motivation what you can do. It's the very first usage of the Map SDK. With the Map SDK, you can control your drone via offboard. It's the very first and basic use of Map SDK from your uh, ground station. Map SDK can be used from the companion computer on board but now we are sending the command off Land board like mode. sending a command from ground control station that's it, the drone again is auto landing okay that's it, let's see how we can do it in action now let's see what is Mav SDK and remember focus of this video is using the GUI not only the Mav SDK commands by terminal so we want to have a GUI and we're going to use Python Kinter as the most simple and user friendly, maybe user friendly, <laughs> with uh, creating GUI. I myself personally don't like Python. I don't know why, but I don't. But right, today, everywhere you can find Python, so you need to use it as well. So, what is Map SDK? Map SDK, was, by the official definition, is a set of libraries providing a high level API to Mablink. So, what is Mablink? So you should know what is Maplink. Maplink is, is a protocol for communicating your drone with another drone, with QGround control or ground control station, or with any other web companion or any other third-party hardware that can communicate with your drone, getting data, getting telemetry, sending commands, or controlling your drone. Maplink is very efficient and uh, reliable protocol for that. So we are going to use Mavlink to control our, our drone, but uh, actually we don't need Mav SDK to send command. We can send 
We can create Mavlink commands or Mavlink packets by ourselves. We, we can create the Mavlink commands for taking off, for land, for offboard modes. But if you have experience with that, with drone code or any other Mavlink libraries, you know it's kind of complicated. Uh, a very hard syntax so and you should take care of many things for example when you send the command you should take care of if the command is received and if it is acknowledged the command so many things you should consider but with MavSDK everything is as easy as sending a single line of command so everything will become easy and let you focus on the mission itself not the program inside so this is the power of MavSDK it will help you build your send your commands and getting data in high level API so you don't need to uh, just get along with the code and become crazy with the bugs and marbling syntax, marbling packet syntax by yourself. So MavSDK will be your help in this way. Now that we know what is MavSDK, let's see how it works. Okay, MavSDK consists of uh, some C++ libraries. In the core of it, it is just C++. Everything is coded on C++. And there's a wrapper or maybe well, you can see a black box in the middle of your way that converts whatever commands that you say, for example, in Python, Swift, Java, or any other language that is supported to this C++. So everything is at the end is uh, converted to C++ commands. So that's how MavSDK works. This black box called MavSDK server. And there's a bunch of things here, gRPC servers or RPC commands. I'm not going to go deep in that. Maybe in the next tutorials I'm going to talk about that. But right now I don't want to scare you from the MavSDK. I just want you to have a very friendly introduction to MavSDK. So this is our black box here. Just imagine if you are using MavSDK Python, you just write a command in Python and it has some auto-generated function and libraries in python the libraries in python are auto-generated so everything is written in c++ and then auto-generated to python so at the end everything again comes back to the good old friend c++ right now python swift java javascript and c sharp are supported you can go ahead and check the website for the latest supports and right now python is the most friendly and most popular way of communicating with mavsdk this is how MavSDK works at the end. You could have used the old way and didn't have the MavSDK server and MavSDK and you could send the Mavlink commands by yourself, but it's a little bit harder and challenging. Okay, now that you have a basic understanding of MavSDK, let's see what we need to start. First of all, you need to know, basically you need to have Python if you're using MavSDK Python. So go ahead and install Python, there are lots of YouTube tutorials you can follow and, for example, configure your Visual Studio code or any your or your favorite IDEs. After installing the Python, you're going to install the MavSDK using a simple command, MavSDK, pip3, pip3 install MavSDK, that's all you need for all the operating systems. And basically, you don't want to risk your uh, real drone with the MavSDK command, so you need the software in the loop simulation, so you won't crash your uh, drone at the beginning. So you need a software in the loop simulator, or you can use hardware in the loop as well if you need, but software in the loop is a very easy way to do that. I'm going to show it to you very briefly in this video, but I'm going to show you some link you can follow on. Uh, run up your simulator, software in the loop simulator. And optionally, if you need for example, you have a real drone and it's connected to a serial telemetry. If you want to connect it to Mav, uh, MavSDK, you can use serial input. The MavSDK supports serial input, but I suggest you to use the Mav proxy or Mav link router to relay your, or forward your serial packets to the UDP. That's the power of networking with UDP. You can forward one of the telemetries coming from serial to a bunch of uh, go on control station or a bunch of computers on your network or even using one of my videos and you can, if you had watched my video you can share it over internet and you have unlimited range telemetry and someone else in another country can have access to your drone that is so always try to use the network and UDP that's best for you now that you have basic understanding of MavSDA and the roadmap let's help you make your hands dirty with MavSDK. This is the MavSDK Python home library for GitHub. Uh, as you can see, there are very good documentation here. You can basically use pip3 install MavSDK to install MavSDK and very good documentation here. Just spend some time reading this uh, tutorial. It will save you lots of time. Okay, since I already have MavSDK, nothing happens when it's installed. And basically, that's all you need to do. It's already installed. Uh, also, the examples are also installed. You can go ahead and 
open the example folders um, select whatever uh, examples you need for example there are takeoff landing off ports uh, for example in this example we're going to use the takeoff and land but with a GUI not with just a simple command okay these are the list of the examples this one is for takeoff and land but with a terminal command the terminal commands are good, uh, for example, when you want to use the companion computers on board the aircraft, uh, the, for example, Raspberry Pi to send the commands to the aircraft. But here we want to use it in QGRAM control. Okay, now that we have Mavis CK installed, the next step is to use PX4 software in the loop or run up your simulation environment. Uh, if you have watched my tutorials, I, I had a video about three years ago about Ardo Pilot and PX4 software developed from 0 to 100. It is still useful, you can use it to get the basic understanding if you don't know what is software developed, but it's kind of old right now, so you better check the documentation. There are very better solutions and easier methods right now if you follow the official documents. That video is for 2019, I guess. Okay, depends on your uh, operating system, you have three options as you can see. In this page, at first we have a basic overview of what is software and develop, how it works, and this kind of a stuff is very useful if you need to overview, need to understand what you're doing. Depend on your operation system, for example, for Windows, it's pretty easy. And actually, all of them are pretty easy. Uh, we're going to use JMAP Sim here just because it's very easy. Gazebo is much more powerful, but for the sake of Godcopter demonstration, JMAP Sim is much more easier. For Windows, if you want to use WSL2 in Windows, uh, Windows subsystem for Linux, it has a little bit confusion if you don't know what is IP, what is virtual environment, because actually you're running the Linux on another node on the network so you should bridge you should map the ports between these two virtual system if you don't know what it is there's no problem just go ahead and install the tool chain which already will install the tool chain for you but remember to tick the item to clone the px4 repository at the end and using this wizard everything is ready to go you don't need to do anything just install the px4 tool chain for windows and then you, you will use sigmin to run the linux commands for ubuntu it's actually much more easier you so you will have a shell file and just go ahead and run that and you are good to go. Uh, as you can see there are uh, also video tutorials about that, you can follow the new video tutorials, not just like myself that is for 2020. You just run the ubuntu.sh, the shell file, and we'll do everything for you. And for Mac it's also very straightforward, just go ahead and clone the repository, build the repository and you are good to go. Just go ahead and watch this video tutorial, I don't want to make this video so long. Okay, uh, in the next step we're going, oh, one more thing, uh, if you know what is Docker, uh, you know Docker containers, they're crazy, they are very great, I will put a link in the description if you don't know what are them, you can use them, they are very much more better in 2022, I suggest you use Docker container if you know what you're doing, if not, no problem, go ahead with the old classic. So I'm going to uh, cd to the clone repository of PX4 Autopilot, this is the folder and the next is we use the make PX4 underscore software in the loop and JMAP sim since we're going to use JMAP sim. If it is your first time you might it might take maybe 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes depending on your system and you may be faced with some errors in the way so maybe it won't be just like what you see here. Just go ahead and debug the code and follow the instructions in the home page you will find the solution. Okay now we have software in the loop ready so the next step is just use the introduction or maybe minified version of the map sdk controller that i have put here for you just go ahead and use git clone with the url of the of my github repository map sdk gui example and simply just cd to the directory and use your favorite ide to open it i'm going to use the visual studio and this is the code this is actually a simple code very straightforward if you know what you what is python you already know what is happening a bunch of imports, drone equal to system. If you <coughs> using MapSDK as a separate bundle, you should specify the ports for MapSDK server as well. But if not, it's just leave it as default. <coughs> Here we are connecting with using UDP, and the UDP port is coming from the text box that the user can enter. There are a bunch of functions here, you can go ahead and explore it by yourself. I'm not gonna show them line by line, but for example, you can see takeoff, land with very simple commands, for example, land. The, oh, the real action is happening in the line 91. It's a wait 
drone action drone drone action that land that's it so that's the power of map sdk you don't need to care about anything else just go ahead and run it and as you can see it's working just as expected this is the minified version of the conversation that you saw in the beginning of the video so let's and if you don't have visual studio code you can already open you can also open it in the python command or python 3 command if you have separate python versions okay let's connect to the port uh, 540t let's click on connect and the software is saying that it is waiting for drone to connect so now we either should connect a real aircraft real drone or a simulated a software in the loop if you have a real uh, drone that you want to connect it at first i should tell you you should be very careful otherwise if you have a serial telemetry and you want to relay it you can use map proxy or just use this simply app that it's using map proxy in the background you will select a serial input of your drone and just t uh, click on the connect and it will relay the data to the udp ports needed for ground control station and uh, your custom app and i called it map rotor just for simplicity it, it does nothing special it just opens a map proxy in background okay let's open our software in the loop it makes weeks for software in the loop jmap sim and it's loading and let's open the QGround control as well just like the introduction video QGround control station is working on a different Manual port and our mode. custom app is working on another port and jmap sim is fedding data to these two and these two think that they are actually connected to a real drone okay now we wait for the nav command to have 3d fix and global Cold position estimate and now we can do a takeoff take just like the video mode. at the beginning we take off to five meter and again land Cold flight mode current position okay that's land it just the mode. first step to motivate you that you can use map sdk for your project and it will i hope it motivates you and uh, make you friend with map sdk and maybe in the next tutorial I will talk more about this kind of stuff and maybe I will have an introduction video to Mavros which is maybe much more powerful than MavSDK or we're gonna work together with some more advanced MavSDK projects. Uh, if you like this kind of video tutorial let me know in the comment section and suggest me some contents or subjects that you're looking for and don't forget to like and subscribe for and notify activate the notification bell to Make sure you won't miss any of our video. Thank you. Have a nice day and have a safe flight. And remember, don't use this map SDK on a real drone unless you have tested it enough on a software in the loop simulation. Remember, in the software in the loop, everything is ideal. You don't have noise. You don't have wind. You don't have any any failure. But in real world, you have many more things. So be careful. Just don't go out and use your app without any uh, testing. Okay. Have a nice day. Have a safe flight. Goodbye.